Hey there, so so far in the course, I haven't really talked to you about what a database is and why it would be useful. So let me talk a little bit about that before we move on with uh, SQL. So a database is just a collection of tables, okay? Uh, that's how data is stored in a database. Basically, the data is inserted into something called a table. And the previous uh, lesson, we executed a script that created two tables for us. And it populated those two, two tables with the data, right? We had employee information in the employee table, and we had department information in the department table, okay? So at the core of a database, the data is stored inside of tables, and those tables basically make up a particular database, right? And there are many kinds of databases out there. There is Oracle, there is SQL Server, there is MySQL, there is um, Vertica, and there's so many different types of databases out there. Uh, we're using a particular one called Postgres, okay? And all databases, and sometimes you're referred to as relational databases, are communicated with using the language SQL, all right? SQL is a database programming language. And as long as you get uh, comfortable using SQL with one database, you can pretty much transfer that same knowledge over to other types of databases, okay? The language really doesn't change at its core. Uh, maybe the, there's syntactical, very, very minor syntactical differences between one database version uh, compared with another, but it's really uh, the same thing. You know, SQL is a database programming language that is used to communicate with the database. And the script that we used earlier uh, was a, you know, all SQL. That was SQL. And that basically helped us create the tables in our database. We created the employee table and we created the um, department table. And that script also loaded data into those tables. So now in the remainder of the course, we're going to be getting deeper into the SQL database programming language. And the knowledge that you gain from this course can be transferable to all other kinds of databases. All right. So in the previous lesson, we looked at two SQL commands. Uh, there were the select and the from. All right. We also saw what a star was, which basically um, is a wild card, which gives us all of the columns uh, from a particular table. So um, you can think of this as maybe even three commands. There's the from, the select, and then as well as a star. Okay, so we've seen that in the previous lesson. Let's look at another command, which is where. All right, where basically is a filter condition. All right, when you want to narrow down the results that you get. Um, you use the where command, all right? And there's a certain order to SQL. You can't just put where before the select like that or, or take where and, and plug it right before the from. You know, that's not going to work. This is incorrect SQL. So with practice, you'll know exactly uh, the correct order in which these commands should be in a SQL statement. But where basically comes after the from, all right? And as you can imagine, after the select, we had something here. And then after the from, we need something, right? It's sort of a declarative language. They call SQL as a declarative language because it's sort of like giving a command to the database, hey, do this for me, all right? So select, we're telling the database, select all columns from something. What is that something? Well, that's the that's a table. We can either use the employee table or we can use uh, the department table, okay? So in this example, we're saying select star from employee, okay? Where, now we're giving a condition, where job equals manager, okay? Could you figure out what this is doing? Think about it. When I run this statement, what will be in our data output pane here? If you guess that only the manager job titles are going to show up, then you're right. So if I run this, it's basically going to give me all of the columns, first of all, right? Because we remember, this is the first part here is columns. We're not restricting any columns. We want all the columns because we're using the asterisk here. And then it's going to give us the data where the column job contains the value manager, okay? So we expect the Blake to be returned, basically this record to be returned. We expect this record to be returned, this one. And uh, that's it. I think there's only three manager records. So let's run this. Whoops. Let's run this and see what comes up. 
all three of these records have the value manager inside of their job column. All right. So again, so far, what are the commands we saw? We saw the select, um, we saw the from, and we saw the where. Okay. There's one more thing that I want to cover in this lesson, and that is the and. And and basically comes after the where. Okay. And you can have multiple ands. You can have, you know, you can keep repeating ands. So uh, let's fill this particular SQL here. I'm going to say select uh, emp ID, select E name, right, the employee's name, and uh, select hire date, and select salary from the employee table where MGR is equal to uh, 7839, okay, and ename is equal to Blake. So let me get rid of these two ands. You probably already guessed what the and is. It basically adds more conditions and more filter conditions, okay? Remember what the where was. It basically adds a filter condition. We want to narrow down the results based on a particular criteria. So we're saying where the manager field, or the column, contains the value 7839. And then after the where, uh, we use this and. And we're saying where the uh, ename column contains the value Blake. All right? Now when we run this, we expect uh, this particular record to be um, shown in the output pane. So let me run this. And notice there's only a single record. But uh, did you see a key difference there between this command right, and this one? Notice that the number of columns, first of all, is different. Okay, In here, we're selecting all of the columns. And in here, again, we're selecting the name, the, the employee ID, the hire date, and sell. Only those columns. Okay, Now, I can get rid of this, these specific columns and use a star here. And when I run this, I'll get all of the columns for uh, for Blake. All right. So let me get rid of these two conditions for now, and let's run the employee table again. Let's run select star from employee to see the entire data in this table. So now it's time for you to try an exercise. Okay. And the assignment is I want you to get me data of those employees whose manager is Blake, all right? Get me those employees whose manager is Blake, all right? Now, this is somewhat of a tricky question, uh, and the whole point of this is for you to look at this data and analyze it and try to figure out how exactly, through this data, you're going to be able to figure that out. So get me all employees whose manager is Blake, all right? So pause the video. I'll go over the solution after you've done trying it, uh, but uh, give that a go. Okay, so part of this assignment was for you to look at this data and analyze it and understand uh, how this table is structured and organized. All right, so this is an employee table, and you see that there's columns such as MGR manager. There's the E name, which is, represents the name of the employee, and of course the job, right? So I asked you to get the data where Blake is the manager, all right? So the way we, we can go about doing this is we first look at the Blake record and we analyze it. And we see that, okay, Blake's ID is 7698. This particular ID uniquely identifies Blake as the employee, okay? And his job title is a manager, all right? And when you go further, next column says MGR, 7839. So when you look for this 7839, you see that that ID is right here. The president of the company, whose name is King, has this ID 7839. And there is no manager. Uh, there's no, there's actually this, this particular uh, entry, this particular cell is empty for King, all right? So King is the president, right? So King doesn't have a manager. So this should give you a hint that this particular column here is the uh, column that represents uh, every 
employees manager okay so when we look at these uh, when we look at all these records here we see that Blake his manager is King and Clark his manager is also King and Jones well his manager is King as well all right so these managers have uh, a manager who's, whose name is King he's a president and their ID is 7839 so the assignment again was to get me all of the employees whose manager is Blake so the way to solve this problem is you look at Blake's ID what is the Blake's unique ID that's right here 7698 so the way you would form formulate this query is we do select we can say get me all the columns from employee where MGR is equal to the ID of Blake right so let's select that and do this now when I run this we get all of the employees who have a manager whose name is Blake all right and obviously 7698 is Blake's ID and these are you know basically uh, all of these employees report to Blake all right so if this uh, question was a little tricky don't worry I just wanted to get your hands dirty with this and uh, uh, let you look at this data and think about it it was a tricky problem which required you to really look at this data and analyze it and I hope you took the time to do that and if it's a little unclear to you don't worry it'll make a lot more sense pretty soon it's time to move on to the next lesson see you soon